It's 2024 and Silk Song still hasn't released. It was announced nearly five years ago, and I don't know what to do anymore. Play other Metroidvanias? <laughs> Wait. Maybe I should play other Metroidvanias. Today, I'm trying eight different Metroidvanias and playing each of them until I reach the credits. I'll give you my impressions of the first few hours of each game while avoiding too many spoilers, as well as my thoughts on each game after finishing. If you're like me and want to find some amazing Metroidvanias, or which ones you might want to avoid while we wait for Silksong, stay tuned and enjoy the video. All right, so first up we have Rusted Moss. I first saw the game in 2022 and didn't really know that much about it, but the art style was reminiscent of Cave Story, one of my old favorites, and the grappling hook platforming really piqued my interest. So I put it in the backlog and that's where it stayed for about a year. And that's how it seems to be for most people since the game really hasn't had that much attention. So let's give it a shot. Hey, wake up. What is talking to me? Oh, puck. Ugh, my head. They'll be looking for you soon. We have to keep going. Oh, it's a little eyeball. Yeah, this art style is really cute. I love the cave story aesthetic. The seer is living on the mountain up ahead. We should try bring her any of Titiana's pieces we find. WASD to move, space to jump. All right, no speed running this one yet. <laughs> Gotta play through the game first. Okay, so we got ledge climbing mechanics and we can go through platforms by holding down even the projectiles look like cave story this is so cave story inspired so we can left click to fire or we can hold for a charge shot wow oh there's like a sound to kind of indicate that it's fully charged Destroying these machines lets you absorb their mana. Press E to use your stored mana to heal. Okay, so it's kind of like Hollow Knight-esque healing. Oh, we got lots of trinkets. Kind of like charms, I suppose? Because we have like an amount that we can equip. Don't have any unlocked yet, though. Press tab to open the map. And we got a Metroidvania. So there's a room all the way up here. That's looking kind of suspicious. I feel like the game might want me to go in this direction. And upgrades. Ooh, gun level. <laughs> Zero. Unfortunate. These guys have, like, no range. They are the Goombas of the game. Tick ticks. Oh, what's this? Oh, we got a trinket, HP overload. What does this trinket do? Extra damage slash range while at full HP. Oh, and we got our one of our first obstacles we need an ability for. Oh, boss arena, Maya. You blew up the lab. Oh shit, I did what? <laughs> I swear, I didn't know they were still in there. Oh my God. How can you do this? We grew up in the Coalition. They were our friends. Oops. They were your friends. <laughs> We've never been on the same side. You you can't believe that. You're still Fern, aren't you? Fern? I guess it doesn't really matter. My pet is going to shred you now. Oh my god. We'll see about that. Your, your pet is not that strong. Oh, phase two. Okay, maybe. Maybe it'll put up a fight. It's got a grappling hook. Look at that. All right. Sweet. <laughs> we got we got through the Grez mother of the game. Hey right, guys, what's happening? Wait, who the hell is this? Wait, that's the wings on the save point. Where did you come from? I think she was in that human's machine. Yes siree, and it sucked. There's like no space to move, super smelly. I could use a stretch. You freed me from the machine, so how about a good old fashioned blessing? Yes, bless me with the grappling hook, please. Yeah, this game is definitely silly. Got silly vibes. Oh, you right clicked again to detach the hook. 
you kind of have to like let go as you're uh, bouncing upward. Nice. I like that. Can you- oh wait, can you bunny hop? Oh my god, you can. Although it's tricky. Oops. Oh, you can only do it once before you land. Okay. Oh, there weren't even spikes down there. This one's a bit trickier. Wait. Kind of like that. I think I just needed to aim a bit further up. Yeah, the, the grappling hook has like a length that you have to take into account. Oops. Oops. Oh, what are these? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I like that you can shoot while you're grappling as well. Trinket Time Manipulator. Slower enemy bullets. Ooh, okay. Oh, I can't equip both, though. Oh, I thought I would kill it. Oh, okay. I assumed this would be like a fake floor or something because of the spikes. I feel like there's several paths that I could have took, but I haven't. <laughs> Oh, what's this? This place is infested with Iker. They were infecting Faye with this back at the lab. The ones they could catch, anyway. They were testing on some creatures at the lab. And that's probably why Fern blew it up. It's very toxic, though. I can only handle staying in it for short moments. If I stay in this Iker for too long, I will get hurt. Ah, okay. I like this. It's kind of like a platforming hazard, but it's not like if you touch it, you instantly get damaged. It's so pleasant to the eyes and cozy. It looks really good, like, art-wise. Oh, shit. Oh, should not shoot this person. Oh, maybe I should. Great Witch Amelie. Maya warned us you were coming, Fern. All those years pretending to be one of us. You make me sick. Oops. Oh, it's Iker. Oh, oh shit. Oops. Oh, it, it actually dissipates pretty quickly. I wonder what happens if it... Actually, uh... If the bar gets full. He's three. Oh. Okay. That was easy. Even Titania's power was not enough. I have failed. All we wanted was just a little more time. Found a piece of Titania. Still curious what this Titania is. This is an arm, isn't it? <laughs> oh, this is Titania? We need to find two arms, two legs, and a torso. Maybe a maybe a head. Some horns? Okay. Yeah, good game design so far. Game is doing a very good job of teaching teaching the gameplay. Oh. Oh, there's a jumping spot. This game has better platforming than I expected. Like, it's actually... Oh, it's good. Good platforming. <laughs> Put me back to the start. Not that this is a horribly difficult sequence, but... Okay. 
We, we got it. <laughs> Casual boss fights. Okay, this phase is very predictable, at least. Fuck. Oh, we got wind. <laughs> I just launched myself into the abyss. Amazing. Oops. Oh my god, I'm getting owned. Did she just die? <laughs> yeah, the boss does have like a lot of HP. It's one of the first bosses where the difficulty really spikes up. This game, I'm really enjoying this game so far. It's a lot of fun. I think it's designed really well and it's really charming. Those wheels seem to deal, like, a lot of damage in comparison to everything else. And, like, I, by that I mean... ...the wheels that I'm shooting out of the pistol. I can just jump up, what am I doing? <laughs> oh my god. I almost choked that. <laughs> Jesus. Alright, it's review time. I loved Rusted Moss. I completed a full playthrough and experienced everything the game has to offer, and it took about 13 hours. The map is so open to explore, with tons of different powers to collect, the boss fights are solid and unique, and the story was surprisingly interesting with a lot of world building going on that I did not expect at all. The game just made me smile so much. I loved the platforming and I enjoyed the combat a lot too, but the game's probably not for everyone. It's on the more challenging side of Metroidvanias in terms of platforming, combat, and even navigation. If you're not experienced with these kinds of games, you might not have a great time. It also plays better with mouse and keyboard, controller seems a bit imprecise. Overall, I highly recommend Rusted Moss if you're looking for a platformer Metroidvania with an interesting world which offers a solid challenge. The devs also adding a huge content patch soon with a new character, new areas, and up to 8 hours of extra gameplay which is absolutely amazing post-launch support. I love to see that kind of thing. Next up is Pseudo Regalia. You might have seen Iron Pineapple play this, and this video's format is actually inspired by his Souls Like You Haven't Heard of series, so shoutouts for that. Just like based off the trailer, this game is so up my alley. Pseudo Regalia is a 3D retro style Metroidvania with a focus on movement and non linear exploration. When I was a kid, I was so obsessed with Super Mario 64, I speed ran the game when I was 9 years old. That was 25 years ago, and I need my dose of shmovement. Let's see if this game delivers. Oh, I'm in a cage. Look at me. I'm a... Hurry. Is she naked? Uh, not completely. Well, she's not wearing pants, but like... I understand why some people want pants. She looks cold. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to fall out of my cage. I hope the princess won't be upset with me. Hmm. It's a princess caging people. What is this? Is this like a targeting system? Oh, I can crouch. Oh! Oh, he got backflips! It actually kind of reminds me of like the Ocarina of Time backflip. This looks like a breakable wall. Not sure. <laughs> but, hmm. 
It might be. Hmm. Dream Breaker. Press X button slash left click. Attack freely while moving to vanquish foes. Hitting enemies will build up magical power. To use it, hold B button slash F key to heal. Oh, I can also heal with it? We got the weapon! Look at that. That's cool. Oh, you can... You can attack while backflipping. Okay, that's cool. Oh. I just tossed my weapon. Let's break the wall. Save point? Oh. Oh! Oh yeah! This game has like the Super Mario 64 backflip. Oh my god, I love it. What's dead should stay dead. It's dead. It should stay dead. What's dead should stay dead. Oh my god. Got some traumatized caged goat kids. Soul meter is very Gatsby slash art deco too. Oh my god. Ouch. What is this? Can I heal? I like that we've got platforming. I miss 3D platformer games. The last one I can remember that's like really memorable is A Hat in Time. How long ago was that? Love how every other goat is just a goat, but we get to play as the sexy goat. <laughs> Do we need the Lumafly lantern? Don't answer that. Oh, we've got, we've got the little poles that you can climb like an SM64. What's this? New power? Slide. Oh, okay. I'd probably have to slide under that. Oh, I lost my weapon when I got hit. Your disguise is paper thin, but it'll fool most of them. Not like it matters. You're stuck here like the rest of us now. What are these kids saying? I wonder if there's something I can do with, like, throwing my weapon. We're back to the start. Holy crap, I am so lost. There's probably, like, one way for me to go. <laughs> I've somehow missed it. Oh. Oh, sh- Oh my god. I dashed away, but... Oh. Oh, there's contact damage. Oops. Uh-oh. I keep jumping into it. Oops. Oh, I jumped too late. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, just faded away. <laughs> Is this the key? Nice. Castle Sansa. Okay. New area? Oh, look at these. <laughs> look at these little guys. <laughs> They're just eggs with feet. <laughs> Ooh, this is uh, an ability. Indignation. Higher power gives you increased combat abilities. Upon reaching power level 2, the range of your attack is extended. At level 3, your damage is increased. Oh, it's like... I, I get more power based on how high my soul meter is. So I... Wanna not heal constantly. What are these bubbles? What? <laughs> I kinda like how you have to like move around enemies to dodge attacks, so your positioning matters. In a lot of games, it's kinda like just about hitting like an iframe button. Can I like do some kind of. Oh, you can do like a double jump. I have to see this again. Oh, I should have went to the other bubble. Oh, you can bunny hop! Oh my god. <laughs> I love bunny hopping. This is just like giving me boss vibes. Listless library. <laughs> I like the music. I feel like I'm being told to climb these bookshelves. I bet the speedrun for this game is so fucking cool. It's because of the fact that you can bunny hop. Probably other reasons too. 
Just breaking? Okay, yeah. Sun Greaves. After a short delay, do an air kick. Hitting walls and objects with it will cause you to jump away. It can be done up to three times until reset. <laughs> okay, where am I going? Go over there. Oh. Okay, we're fine. <laughs> Nice. Nice. Well, we got a thing. That is HP. Nice. Oh, I didn't... I didn't even notice that my character actually got... Well, not pants. <laughs> but... Greaves. Glad you enjoy the content. Oh, sh Oh, you can... Reflect those? Oh, cool. Oh, I don't know if that does damage or not, but... Wait, I feel like I've been this way. I have not. <laughs> I'm scared. There's so many different ways to go. My brain... Oh my god. My brain cannot handle this many paths. New area? Dilapidated dungeon. <laughs> okay. Wait, this is where I started. No, this is... Is this gonna be the dark spot? Speedrunners don't get lantern, they do dark rooms. True. Just need to like boost my monitor brightness. <laughs> you can definitely make it across. Oh. oh, it warped me all the way back. Oh, this is just like in Hollow Knight, where it warps you back to the start of the dark room if you take hazard damage, which is kind of smart to prevent people from like getting stuck. Where am I going now? <laughs> The underbelly. Is this where I'm supposed to be? <laughs> I feel like I've taken the wrong path. <laughs> Let me see if... Throwing the stick can... Oh. Oh, I... I did that totally by- <laughs> totally on purpose. <laughs> um, intended. Yep. Oh, Let's- can I run? Oh. I might need to actually kill that enemy. That open the gates. <gasps> we made it. Ascendant light. Attack objects and enemies to bounce off them. In addition, your weapon now glows brightly, even in the darkness, dark, darkness, <laughs> dar darkest of places. <laughs> We've successfully. Sequence broken, so I can attack enemies to bounce off of them. Ooh. Oh, cool. Can I... Oh, I can do it on those guys, too. Oops. Use this spot to, like, climb up off of enemies. Oh, and it refreshes... Okay, that's really cool. It refreshes your wall jump. Okay, so I already feel like I had a lot of, like capability in terms of movement, but it's going to give me like a lot more options than I already had. And now we can see in the dark areas. So there's like a dark room up ahead. Okay, that's doable. Nice. Oh, we're spinning. Jump while sliding. Yes. As soon as I got the slide, I was like, oh man, I can't jump while I slide. <laughs> of course they thought of it.
All right, let's give my review. I finished Pseudo Regalia and it took just under seven hours. It's such a cute little game, I absolutely loved it. My one issue is that it's very tough to navigate. There's no in-game map and I was almost in a permanent state of being lost. But apparently the dev is working on patching in an in-game map and Thank God for that. This game is just so much fun to explore, figuring out how to get from point A to point B. There's so much freedom of movement and creativity and problem solving. This game is all about movement and exploration. There's not much emphasis on combat, world building, or story, and that's not going to appeal to everyone. The game's really short, it has a very indie vibe in an almost endearing way, and it feels almost like a proof of concept for a bigger game, which I hope and pray that the dev someday releases. But the game's price tag is totally fair for what it is at just $6. I highly recommend giving it a try. All right, next up is Islets. You might have seen Scurry or Relia play this game, shoutouts to them. I've heard this game is just a super cozy, chill metroidvania, and the artwork looks really cute. It doesn't have many reviews, but the ones it has are overwhelmingly positive. And that's literally all I know about it. Let's give it a try. All right. I love the backgrounds, I love the art style. The environment is so pretty. The music's also good. Oh, we got a roll as well. It's got like a little cool down. Oh, you can kind of like roll and then bunny hop. This is the third game in a row we've played with a bunny hop. Oh my God, I'm so fucking blessed. Love the layering in the background. Yeah, it's so nice. Pick an upgrade. Oh, this is giving me Super Mario RPG vibes right now, <laughs> which I love. <laughs> Give me any game with a card system. It doesn't even matter like if they're actually cards that you collect. Just put cards on the screen and I'm happy. Well, you know I'm going for the max health increase. Oh, you like lunge forward when you swing. That's interesting. So there's no down slash. Oh, you can destroy the grass. That's important. All right. The fact that there's bunny hopping means this is automatically a good speed game. I like the movement. Oh, what's this? Oh, oh, you have to dodge roll through. Okay. You can shoot arrows pretty quickly. Right bumper. Oh, you have to shoot it because it's a bumble. Ah, okay. Oh, boss arena. Okay, just like a gauntlet. Oh, I like that it shows you how many enemies you have to beat. These guys are kind of pushovers. Ooh. Oh. Grave crawler. Oh, it. They kind of aim at you and then they fly at you. Wait, you get an arrow back with each hit? Holy shit, that's a lot. Nope. It's doing the False Knight tantrum thing. <laughs> of course, I associate it with Hollow Knight immediately. Once again, I've cornered myself unwisely. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> First try it. Holy crap, I have no health. <laughs> I didn't even notice how little health I had. Not even close. <laughs> Game gives you a lot of time to react. It's not a free boss fight either. Like there's still some level of challenge, which is nice. Oh, is it gone yet? <laughs> oh, ability. Double jump, alrighty. Oh, you do a little spin when you double jump. I love it. That's amazing. Oh, what's this? You can use it to move around the island a bit quicker. You can only teleport to teleporters you've already passed and only if they're on the same island. This seems to be the first teleporter you've discovered, so it won't be very useful just yet. Oh, who's this? It's a bird person. Ah, hello, little mouse. Are you lost? Lucky for you, I have all these islands mapped out already. Oh, it's the map person. If you make your way to this island's ports, you can fly between islands and discover all there is to see. Oh, we've got the Tick Ticks. They're purple in this game. Oh, what the heck? Ouch. 
Oh, this, uh, this is a destructible block underneath me. Oh, that's kind of awkward. I can shoot my bow down, I guess. Yeah. Oh, you, you dash into it from the line, and then I double jump after. Okay. Oh, it's the upgrades are different each time. Okay, now that I've played the game a little bit more, more arrow ammo is pretty strong. Forming a grapple dash refills your double jump. Oh. Oh. I like that. I'm curious how much extra damage uh, that upgrade adds. Ah, okay. So we got some more movement challenges. I mean, <laughs> maybe I wouldn't call that a challenge, but... Oh, this is like the lift to the other islands? Oh, it's the guy from from after the boss fight. Hey, I remember you. I wish I could repay you somehow for helping me back there. Ah, I know. You can use my airship if you'd like. <laughs> I'm a bird, so I haven't really been using it anyway. Just hop in the airship and you can fly and discover new islands. Oh, I, I, I actually fly around. It's not just fast travel. All right, let's go. Sky City. Oh, what? You know, I was so close to defeating the three great beasts. The only issue was that I couldn't find Cinder Island. So I guess that's where the beasts are. So I just need to touch. Okay, that's cool. A little movement challenge. Can I just go down? I can just go down. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, hi. And what do we have here? Are you lost, little mouse? Yes. You never know who you'll run into. Oh boy. I don't have an attack. Do I? Yeah, I don't. Oh, it just hits itself. Okay. So I just have to survive. Okay. Oh, interesting. Your hitbox is pretty small, thankfully. I think the red circle- oh shit. I think the red circle shows your hitbox, and it's hitting itself once again. By them. <laughs> Is that cat versus fish? It's a, it's a mouse. Hello there. Are you looking to tour these ruins? I do have a few rules to follow. Please don't touch any statues, and also don't damage the plants. Hmm, I think there's one more rule I'm forgetting. Also, please do not unleash the captured spirits of 1,000 deadly beasts trapped in a tomb at the depths of the ruins. Alright. <laughs> so don't touch the grass. Let's get my arrows back. Is there a boss? This is the tomb of 1,000 spirits. Well, anyways, let me go get some paperwork and I'll be back. You just wait right here. Alright, bye. Oh, more bullet hell type stuff. Oh, shit, I was not expecting that. <laughs> I forgot I could roll for a second. I was like, what do I do? No, what's it doing now? Oh, boy. Oh, I should have went to the left for that. Gave more time for the bullets to spread out. All right, pretty chill, boss. It just occurred to me, like, maybe this boss doesn't have contact damage. Stop that. I think I'm glitching the boss by dealing so much damage. Because I don't feel like it's supposed to do those like pillars attack that come out of the ground because the pillars are behind it and I can't see them. Oh. Oh, I got, a, got an ability. Nice. Cloud shots. Oh. Shoot arrows with solid trails. Okay. We, we've unlocked all the movements in the game. Or all the movement we need. Amazing. I love it. That's actually a really cool way to get vertical movement. Oh, we finally get these key bubbles again. I was wondering when they were gonna reintroduce that mechanic. Can I just, like, shoot the cloud thing at them? Fuck. I can just hit them with my sword. I don't need to switch to the arrow. Ah, 
Ah, we've got a save point. All right, it's review time. I finished Eyeless in about nine hours. The first half I loved, the second half I enjoyed, but not quite as much. I'm a person who's pretty biased towards games with a lot of mechanical depth and challenge. Eyelets is a chill, cozy Metroidvania, and it succeeds at being that very well. The whole premise of connecting the islands and creating new avenues to explore is just so smart and creative. It's such a great idea for a Metroidvania because it's a genre known for backtracking, and the mechanic makes backtracking feel so much more fresh. The way the difficulty ramps up throughout the game is actually pretty well balanced, although I found there were some strategies I could use that would kind of trivialize some of the bosses. There's a system of collecting cards around the map, which each grant a choice of three different upgrades for your character. I found the choices a lot of fun, although the pool of choices could have been a bit bigger. Overall, I really enjoyed this game. Even though it wasn't the perfect fit for me, I had a lot of fun with it. If it looks appealing to you, definitely give this game a shot. It's totally worth playing. Okay, so the next game is pretty gruesome and gory, so there's your warning. I heard about Infernax through Cranky Templar, so shoutouts to him. Infernax is one of those love letters to old retro-style titles like Zelda 2 and Castlevania 2. I wasn't super interested in it at first, but seeing all the post-launch support, adding new playable characters, adding a new multiplayer mode, got me really interested. So let's give it a try. Young Duke Fireborn, tired of the violent crusades, finally returns home. That seems out of character. I enjoy violence. This is where Fireborn's adventure begins. Ooh, I got a bandana. Cool. Okay, thank god we can use D-pad. Oh, we're going left to start with. Oh. Wow. What a, what a start. <laughs> Okay, there's a bit of a lingering hitbox on the melee attack. Limo nada. Okay, so we've, we've got XP in the top middle. Looks like there's also item slots, coins, and keys. And the map, there's like an auto-completing map, which is nice for... Oh! Jesus! Why is his tongue out? Well, he asked to be killed. So that's an easy choice. Jesus! But I mean, he asked for it. Hey, Pogo. What is this upgrade? Oh, we can spend XP on stuff. Okay, so there's not like normal level ups, we just spend the XP. Oh, these eyeballs remind me of the eyeballs from Terraria. Okay, so far we're hitless. We could actually hitless the game at this rate. Duke Fireborn, please aid us in battle. Oh, what? Oh, shit. Oh, my shield. Does. Uh, my shield block stuff. As Duke demand to enter their home. <laughs> oh shit. That's some gargoyle boss time? The gate. Hold the gate. What is going on? Uh oh. Uh oh. Do I run? Or, or do I help them? <laughs> Oh shit, that was, that was very close. I actually don't know how I didn't get hit there. Oh! Pro problem solved. Handsome ha Hans. Hello, traveler. Did you know you're speaking to Hans the Great? Oh, this is the Zote the Mighty character. Yes, you see, I, Hans, am a respected member of a certain organization. It's kind of a secret. I can tell you're impressed. If you want to attempt to gain my prestige, we meet in the Tohen Passage. It's like if they give me the option to... Oh, what's this? Skeleton? Oh god. That's a big boy. Holy crap. Okay. Starting off easy enough. Priest, the chest over there contains our alms for the poor. Perhaps you would like... Oh, I was going to take it. <laughs> um, no. I was hoping I could just... Oh! <laughs> what are you doing? That gold is for the needy. <laughs> I am the needy. See ya. Oh, 
Oh, what? Oh, I... Oh, shit. I died. <laughs> Fuck. Oops. Either lose all your progress or keep some of your XP and gold. So you lose some, but you won't be able to select classic anymore. I'm going with the casual restart. <laughs> I lost the map progress still. That was like the most important part. Karma for stealing from the poor. <laughs> Okay, that was much easier. And we're probably supposed to go this way first. All right, let's do it, boys. Ow. Ow. Okay, <laughs> phase two, perhaps? Seems a bit anticlimactic. Wow. Okay. Who was this? No one knows why our troubles began about a year ago, but since that day, this has been here. The magic seal locks the door. I've seen a gem such as these in Valeshire vale Keep before we had to con condemn it. Okay. At least we can enter this place now. <laughs> Something you should definitely remember. Okay, that deals a lot of damage. Okay, so you have to kind of duck to adjust the height of your shield for some of the... Ow, some of those projectiles. Yeah, this game's uh, definitely like retro style, but it has some like nice, uh, ow, modern stuff too, which is kind of nice. Oh God, shield time. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this this part's a nice difficulty spike though. We got a boss. Oh boy. Jesus. <laughs> That's uh, something. It's gonna shoot laser beams out of its belly, isn't it? Oh. Oh, I have to hit the head. Oh. Why didn't I expect that? Oh my god. <laughs> Love the death animations. Oops. Okay, that was pretty easy. Ah, so this is one of one of the gem things for the gate. Yes. All right, four more. Yeah, I've been to the left. Oh, maybe not all the way. Oh, no, I haven't. I don't think I've been in here. Danielle, good night. There's a huge monster I cannot seem to damage lurking in the basement. You can eradicate it. I'll teach you my family's ancestral fighting technique. Why don't you just use the fighting technique? Be careful down there. I wasn't able to get close enough to hit it. Oh, boy. Ooh. Hello. Oh shit, oops. Why wasn't I expecting that? Oh, I, I didn't see the eyeball move. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah, stand a bit further back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that took way too long. <laughs> Jesus. This woman always have a spike pit in her basement, or did the boss install it? The boss probably had it installed. The boss renovated the place a little bit. All right, Infernax is actually such a good game. I had some confusion with the classic versus casual difficulty. I chose classic because I wanted a challenge, but then after my first death, the game offered a casual respawn option, which I selected for the sake of convenience. But this fully switched the game from classic to casual, not just for the death punishment. It gave me an extra life, additional save points, and reduced penalties for dying, and I couldn't switch back to classic without restarting completely. At first I was a little bit annoyed by this, but ultimately 
Honestly, it didn't make much of a difference since you can purchase a ton of extra lives anyways, and the bosses I faced in my playthrough were kind of pushovers. But that's not the best part of the game. What I enjoyed most about Infernax wasn't the combat, although it was fun. It was the world and the puzzle solving and the choices you can make. I don't want to spoil too much here, but I love the different paths you can take with each quest. Infernax offers such a unique experience. The music slapped, the artwork was great, the deaths were really cool, and I could honestly see myself playing it more in the future. If you can stomach the gruesome artwork, I definitely recommend giving Infernax a try. All right, it's the time we've all been waiting for. That's right. It's Goo Keeper time. This game stood out to me because it has a neat vibe. The character looks like Grimace doing a Samus cosplay, and six out of seven of its Steam reviews are positive. Let's try it out. Okay, let's, let's do this. Oh. What an interesting place. It's very green, and I am very purple. <laughs> Oh, right trigger crouches. Oh, I can just roll right off the bat. There's gonna roll everywhere. How about that? Press A to jump up. All right, will do. Can press X to shoot. Oh, I have the dash already. You start with the dash. Imagine the bragging rights if you made it. Yeah, put it in my gamer resume. Goo Keeper Iron Man mode. That would be at the top. Above Hollow Knight, any percent. World records. Press X to shoot enemies, left trigger to lock your movement. Oh, to aim, I guess. Press to use your special ability. What the heck is that? Oh, it's a little goo tether. Press to see the world map. Also, where the heck am I? I look like I'm in an attic with like a bunch of old boxes and shit in the background. I am so confused. <laughs> All right, uh, that's the map. No, oh, it's a save point. The chair, I guess, or the bed. You are the Goo Keeper, hero of Shroom Mast. You must go out and save all of the goos. They were all taken by evil creatures to prevent access to the living black tar. I love this. The way that this room is laid out kind of makes me think of like a Metroidvania vertical room. Not Metroidvania, Metroid specifically. What the f is this enemy? <laughs> what the hell is this thing? <laughs> oh, are these these are spikes, aren't they? Well, I guess I'll go up. All of these like mushrooms and stuff, it makes the environment like so busy. Not even playing the game, but I already feel lost. I am extremely lost right now. Oh, there's like a portal in here. What the heck? I guess this is like a waypoint? The fall speed really builds up very quickly. And there's like screen shake when you land. Oh my, let's go toward the boss. I assume if I die, I'm going to lose all my progress. Just making that assumption. Bow beetle, <laughs> amazing. Oh my God, that attack came out so quickly. Okay, boss is just kind of walking back and forth. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and I still I still don't really get the special attack. Like it's just my regular attack with a bit less range, but it deals way more damage. And I can use it at the same time as my basic attack, so I just like spam both buttons. Alright. Boss time. Oh my god, those projectiles are so fast. Oh I can't dash through the projectiles. There's no iframes. I feel like the boss is just kind of moving around randomly, like like it's not actually programmed to attack where I am. It just kind of runs to a side of the arena and shoots. You have gained the hammer. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> the enemy just teleported away. <laughs> That's a powerful hammer, dude. I'm trying to I'm trying to farm. Uh, Wait, wait, crouch is still on right trigger. So I'm dashing and crouching at the same time, even though I rebound the crouch to left trigger. You've gained large beam. <laughs> I like it. Large, oh, this is, a, this is a trinket. 
I don't know what they're actually called in game. I'm calling them trinkets. Shoots a larger, more powerful beam. Oh, oh, it's it changes my special. How do it change my basic attack? Okay, that's cool. You, you get hit so fast. Like, one attack, you can get hit, like, five times if you're not careful. Oh. I killed it instantly. <laughs> that was very quick. <laughs> Turns out if you just mash your buttons, you can kill enemies very fast. <sighs> yeah, I feel like... So, I, I feel like the bosses should have a bit more HP because they... So far, they die very quickly. And you also die very quickly. Okay, as you might have noticed, I didn't love the game. It actually gave me a headache, which might be the first time a game's ever done that to me. But doing some more research, I found out this game is the first game made by a married couple, and their cat is part of the team. And I like that. There's a lot that's good about the game, but the movement in particular really needs some work. There's also a lot of camera glitches, and I would personally double or triple the amount of invincibility frames after getting hit. There's a lack of feedback with some things, like taking damage. I would also give the dash invincibility frames by default. You shouldn't take damage while traveling with a teleport. Some enemies need better, more clear telegraphs in terms of visual and audio, and enemy projectile speeds are generally too fast to dodge, especially with the large size of the player character. Some environments, like the Omega Lair, looks really really nice, but most were way too busy. There's just too many environmental objects placed in the foreground. The music was generally kind of tough to listen to, especially combined with the loud, repetitive ambient tracks layered behind them. And the game wasn't balanced very well. For example, with the energy shield upgrade, most bosses could be killed without even moving. On the bright side, I think that with a few weeks of work polishing the game, you could have a decent, cute metroidvania. But right now, I can't recommend it. Okay, just want to make a quick note that the dev has released a patch which addresses a lot of the issues I talked about, which is really great to see. I haven't played the game again since, but it's great to see the post-launch support. Okay, next up is Chiaroscuro. This game actually looks like a really aesthetically pleasing, chill metroidvania. I saw it on Steam and was pretty interested. It's been in the works for about three years and there's a demo available, but the game isn't released yet, so I decided to wait for it to release until the dev reached out and offered to send me an extended demo to show off an extra chapter of the game. So I told them I'd give it a try. Let's do it. Chapter one, the catastrophe. Ooh. I like the art style. <clears throat> the particle effects look really nice. The lighting looks really nice. I like the music. Press A to jump, hold it to jump higher. So we have, have we have kind of like a variable jump height, the jump button. And we start with a wall jump. Nice. Obtained thorn. Press X to swing your thorn in the direction you're facing. <clears throat> oh, there's like a combo if you uh, hit X faster. It pauses you in the air if you swing while you're in the air. So you can kind of like jump up and smack enemies a bunch of times. I like that. I also have uh, directional attacks up and down as well. I love this game's vibes. Oh, we've got a kind of different area. New enemies. <clears throat> Ouch. Oh, what's this? Pick up. Press Y to throw an equipped health, lumen, or strength jar. I don't know what kind of jar I got. So I only have two health? Or can I take two hits and survive? <laughs> the enemy's underwater. Interesting. Oh, I can swim. Enter. Oh. <clears throat> I didn't realize I could enter those doorways. The lighting effects are so pretty, and I love the minimalistic color palette. Like, it's so good. It looks really nice. Especially after Goo Keeper. <laughs> yeah, the sound design is really satisfying, too. Oh, what was that? You can only hold so many jars at a time. Oh, that was a health jar. 
But it seems like I also... Oh, there's fall damage. Oh my god, I did not expect that. Oh, that's not fall damage. That's a hazard. Oh, did the game crash? It crashed. Well, that's okay. This is an alpha version of the game. Oh, you can see there's like a little bar underneath my health. I think that's... I think you kind of like have hive blood by default, so you just kind of regenerate HP over time. Yes. Okay. Okay. I was like right before the save point when I crashed. <laughs> Stretcher. Hello there, young one. Have you seen my dog? I don't think so. Ugh. It's okay. Keep an eye out for him, will you? Nice mustache, dude. Oh, it's the witch doctor person. All right, see ya. <laughs> What's happening? Oh, it's the dog. Bark, bark. Dover seems to be missing his owner. It's time to take Dover home. Obtained Dover. <laughs> oh goodness, you found him. Thank you for bringing my boy home. As a token of my gratitude, please take something from my lost and found chest over there. Gladly. With the access. It's a rock. Obtain the strange fragment. Press right analog stick to dash in the direction you're facing. Oh, we got the dash. We got the dash from saving the dog. The most important thing. Okay, I like the way the dash feels. The dash feels pretty good. So you need to use a resource to dash. In interesting. It's limited by your lumen. Nah, no, I don't think so. Oh shit, that's an enemy. Oh, that was like a an item or something. Ooh, it's a whale. Atlas, ooh, a visitor. I don't get too many of you around here. Are you lost? Uh, a little bit. A friend of mine and I have been working on something recently to aid travelers, a map, if you will. Oh, the map person is a whale in this game. How did a whale map out the area? This game definitely has like a slower pace, which is kind of cool. Oh, you can pogo these. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, it's the Plague Doctor guy again. So it's you who's been following me. Are you after the light too? Quite the rare element we have here. Can't let anything happen to it. Okay, we're fighting. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, he killed me. Oops. Oh, shit. Cool. Yeah, combat's better than I thought. It's definitely a lot of fun. Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm sorry, I didn't realize that and I have a bad case of sleepwalking. Oh, cool area. It's all blue, a little purpley. Oh, it's a tree, evil tree. This is like the spooky Halloween zone, There's pumpkins. <laughs> like how you kind of retain a bit of speed after you do an air dash. That definitely makes the air dash feel better. How are you doing? Oh shit, balls, fuck. Okay. Yeah, I really, I, I, I've been enjoying this game's music a lot too. Oh, what's this? Pumpkin Prince. My father always used to keep this grove so docile. No one dared question him about this or that. No matter, you will not be sticking around much longer. All right, let's fight then. Oh, okay. Timing your slashes can be kind of tricky. Oh, what's happening? Oh shit, ouch. Ouch. Oh, what's happening? Yep. 
you can kind of stun lock the boss a little bit. Yeah, that boss got bullied. Okay, thank God. This is the right spot. Wait, who the hell is this? Doctor, I couldn't stop him. He's too strong. The bandit, he stole my boat. Stole your boat? Dart, why would he need a boat? I think he's weak to the aqua element. He acted, we knew each other, and that I could trust him. Rose, I'll be waiting for you on the other side of the water. Be careful. Oh, this gives me oxygen. Okay, I'm curious what is down underneath here. Oh, I don't have the element to destroy that yet. I uh, oh, obtained the Aqua Core. It appears you are now able to breathe underwater. Oh, oh, and I got a new spell. I can destroy the blue walls. Nice. Oh, that was a short swim. Rose, this expedition won't be easy. The Arctic cliffs are treacherous. You must proceed with caution. I'll find a safe path for us up the mountain. All right, I enjoyed Chiaroscuro, and let's start with the good. Visually, the game is beautiful. I love the color palettes, the particle effects and lighting effects, and the character and enemy design all looks great. The music is beautiful and pleasant to listen to. It's got an interesting story that definitely had me hooked wanting to know what would happen next. But gameplay wise is where some more flaws started to show for me. Now keep in mind, this is a very early pre-release version of the game, so issues are to be expected. So first, I don't like that the dash is tied to a resource. Also, because it seems like the hard mode just reduces your health, it made things feel more punishing and tedious, but not actually more difficult. The particle effects from hitting enemies kind of obscures things and makes it tricky to see when enemies are attacking. Comboing enemies also doesn't work too well because hitting them usually knocks them back outside of your range. I'm also not sure about the game's healing system. You know, I like the Estus system. I like the focus system. I appreciate that they're trying to do something different, but I'm not convinced it works that well. But I think the devs done an amazing job with the game overall, and I'm really looking forward to Chiaroscuro's full release. Okay, next we're gonna try Fairy Afterlight. I first heard about this game because a bunch of the testers were from the Hollow Knight community, and the game just looks absolutely beautiful. But it doesn't have many reviews, it seems like no one's playing the game, even though people generally seem to enjoy it. And I just felt awful for the devs, so I really want to highlight this game, let's give it a shot. I like the color palette. The Abyss. Hollow Knight copy? Question mark. I'm just, is, is that me? I'm just a, like a little blob. <laughs> oh, I'm, I've got eyes and a face. Let's go left instead. That leads nowhere. Okay. <laughs> Boy, I can attack. Oh, what a, what an attack. That, that is interesting. Oh, what the heck? I'm getting whisked away into the skies. Taffy Reef. Okay. I'm in a new area. This background is really pretty. We've got like a variable jump height as well, based on how long you hold the button. Oh, they drop a little currency. Oh, oh God. Ouch. There's something underneath my health as well. Oh, what's this? This is terrible. Whatever am I to do? Oh, you startled me. Who are you, mysterious one? You don't know who you are? That's a shame. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Did you lose your memory in an accident, perhaps? You don't seem to understand the current situation. No, I do not. Oh, little stained glass images. Nice. Lucentia once ruled over Illumina, bringing peace and order, maintaining the light in this world. But alas, the fearsome Kratarev one day broke free from the imprisonment seal. With his immense power of darkness, Kratarev destroyed Lucentia, took her core, and kept it for himself. I know how to restore the fragments, but I can't do it alone. Since both of us have the same purpose, why don't we work together? I hope you don't mind me giving you a name. How about Kimo? I think Kimo suits you. No, I don't like that name. What does this do? Oh, that... Oh, this used to like open doors, I guess. Okay, so that's that's just used to like summon platforms. Oh, it's a big fish. 
going through the sky. There's a bunch of them. What is that? Maybe it's a key, perhaps? Ah, yes, it is. All right, let's find the other key. It's probably down here. Here's the key. Thank you so much. Now I can continue my travels. The name is Talia. I'm a traveler who records anything and everything on my journey. Is this the map person? Oh, it's a map person. Ah. I like the map artwork as well. Oh, skills? Inventory? Lore? With right bumper to absorb engines. Oh, energies, not engines. <laughs> I totally misread that. Hmm. How do we get through the spikes here? The creature seems to be able to walk through the spikes right yet, right there. Do you see I'm capable of controlling those creatures? Oh, it's it's friendly. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> we have commandeered the enemy. Okay, I like that mechanic. Oh, so that's what the resource is for, because it used one of my oh. green crystals. Yeah, the game's cute. I like it so far. Oh, you can even move it up and down. Oh, you can move it all over the place. Amazing. We are now up on the bridge. Oh, it's a big, big guy. Oh. Oh, the bridge broke. Unfortunate. Not to worry, I can help. I also have the ability to control the environment. Jesus. Let's use my ability and make a run for it. Wait, how does this work? Oh, what? Oh, I move it left and right, and there's a bar at the bottom of the screen. I didn't even see that. Okay, just <laughs> remade the bridge. Oh, I can hit right bumper to like make the platforms swap. That's cool. Dear me, what on earth is going on? I'm trapped between these boulders and cobwebs. I was, oh no, she's here. She's back at her lair. Quick, you guys better hide before she finds you. Let's go, but be careful, Kimo. Okay. This looks kind of like a boss arena. Yep. Attack the ruin stuck above to make it fall? Huh? What? Oh. <laughs> Game's telling me exactly what to do. Streamers try to pronounce your username. Ouch. I didn't even realize I took damage and I was at one HP. Oops. Oh. Okay. Okay. Interesting. All right. We killed the big spider and are absorbing its dark energy. It was I who created you, little one. Holy shit, what is that? You might not recognize me or even see me as quite different from you. However, you are still a part of me. I guess. Okay, the wall jump feels pretty good. I like the wall cling state. You can just tap left to get out of the wall jump. That's good. Looks like we've reached a new place, Kimo. Oh, and there's more, there's more fish. I like how there's like flying fish in the background of these areas, it's really cute. I had no idea you'd be able to use spider legs after defeating the giant spider, how incredible. Another boss room, probably. This presence, I have a bad feeling about it. Make sure you're prepared before we go further. Yeah, I'm ready, I guess. Oh. Another spider-esque character. Oh. Oh, it hit me, I think. Yo, Shelby. Oh, what? <laughs> He's just throwing rocks at me. Ouch. I tanked that one with my face. Um... Dead. Defeat Nodia. Cool. Okay, I finished Fairy Afterlight after seven hours 
and I didn't love the game. It's a shame because it's so beautiful. It's even better when you play it than it is in the trailer. The music is so pretty and I loved the character design. The game has a lot going for it, but it's bogged down by an overall lack of polish, especially with regards to the combat feeling so imprecise and awkward. The sound design and audio balance was also flawed. It's like one of my videos with numerous actions lacking any audible sound effect. For example, there's almost no feedback when you take damage, so you'll sometimes just die while you still think you're at full health. The platforming was mostly enjoyable. In that department, it felt kind of like budget Ori. But much like Ori in the Blind Forest, Fairy Afterlight isn't much of a Metroidvania, even though it's advertised as one. It's really linear, and there's nothing to find around the map other than scraps of lore. So the openness of the game just results in getting lost, because it's sometimes way too unclear where to go next. Also, they spent the entire game making the protagonist kind of morally ambiguous, or sometimes extremely evil, so I just didn't really care what happened to them, and subsequently didn't care about the overall plot. And that's a shame because it seemed like they put a lot of effort into crafting an interesting world that ultimately never captured my attention. Also, I really think this team should make a game where their artwork and music and presentation can shine, something kind of like Grease, rather than making something more gameplay focused like Ori in the Blind Forest, because Fairy Afterlight didn't really do it for me. Next is a game called Bloody Hell. This is a bullet hell that looks kind of like Enter the Gungeon, but with some non-linear exploration and unlockable upgrades to navigate to new areas of the map. So it's a Metroidvania, and it's also free to play and has overwhelmingly positive reviews and was apparently made by a team of students in the Netherlands. So this game just sounds really awesome. I'm excited to give it a shot. Hey, Azrael, dear, wake up. God has summoned you. Oh, boy. You must go see him, dear. He's up there and opened the golden gates for you. Just enter through them. Okay, let's go see God. Oh, God's just a big eyeball. Azrael, thou shalt fulfill a holy motion for thine God. Thou doth this by eradicating mine greatest nemesis and former ally, Satan. Okay. Accomplish thine holy mission, and thee shall receive the greatest reward. Now goeth, and satisfy thine god. Oh. Oh. Alright, I just got cast off into hell. <laughs> the achievement, go to hell. Hold to shoot. Okay. Oh my god. What is that eyeball? Jesus. Ooh. I just blew it up. Do I go inside? Ugh. So I'm collecting bones as a currency. Oh, I feel like this is an arena. Yep. Oh, God. Oh, they're shooting shit from staffs. I like the enemy design. Like, I, I really like the eyeball doors. <laughs> is there, like, a dodge roll? There's, a, like, a little bit of, uh... Like, the gun is not perfectly accurate. There's like a variable that make, makes it like a little bit inaccurate, so it's going like a bit off of where I'm aiming. Oh boy. We gotta kill these eyeball dudes. I don't know if I trust God, though. God just kind of casted me into hell. Unlocked the dash. You can now dash over gaps and bullets, so we got the iframes. Oh, that was not good. Oh, the skull can be filled with rage. Once you've gathered enough rage, you can hold down E to heal. Dealing damage and feeding the skull hearts will generate rage. Ah. Oh, what's this guy? Oi, Azrael, it's you. How are you doing, man? You were sent by God, eh? I also came down here just to beat the living daylight out of Satan myself. Anyway, good luck here, Az. Let's see who can beat Satan first, eh? Oh, last thing, I would advise you to interact with those crosses on the ground. They serve as a gateway to heaven, and you can return on them when you die. Oh, that's the checkpoint. I gotta say, this game is very well made for a free game. And, and for students as well. I guess I need to go back to heaven and buy something to break those walls. Oh, we can buy some different upgrades. This upgrade will summon a shield around you that will protect you from incoming projectiles. 
This upgrade will allow you to collect more bones in the wild and from corpses. This will allow you to move faster. Ooh. I assume those little squares on the bottom right of them are how many slots they take. Panting. Azrael. Azrael. My sweet babies. They fell down. They fell into hell. Jesus. Find them, Azrael. Find them all, please. I beg of you. We got, we got to find some grub equivalents. This is kind of like a Metroidvania map, but like a different perspective, which is kind of neat how they still have that style of map. Boy, Azrael, you should know that if you're feeling a bit lost, you can always open your map. By the way, there's some big ass dude over there. <laughs> okay. It's also marked on your map. I could beat him easily, but you know, I wanted to leave him for you to gain some experience in the field. Wow. Very considerate. Thank you. Oh, there's, there's the big ass dude. <laughs> Let's fight them. Jesus. Got a large chest, sir. <laughs> Very interesting attacks. Oh, fully, fully charged. Once the skull is filled with rage, you can press Q to use your ultimate ability. After activating, press left mouse button to slice up demons. <laughs> what? What is happening? <laughs> I guess you can kind of like bounce between the enemies by clicking on them. Okay. Defeated pork chop. Demon slaughtered. Very nice. Good little tutorial boss. And we got a thing. This blood vial makes your bullets travel faster. You can equip it at an alchemy table. Gotta find an alchemy table to equip things. That's probably the alchemy table. So is this like the charm type system, but it's like Tetris to equip things? <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. So now I've got faster bullets. Oh, and they look different. Cool. Oh, God. Oh, God. This looks like a secret. Ah. Oh, it's, it's a chicken. One out of 18... There's a little shield. Got a circle strafe. Or can I just roll through? Oh my god. Not if I'm immediately going to get hit. <laughs> okay. You can definitely take damage quickly in this game if you're not careful. Unlocked the charge laser. Use holy power to charge up a massive laser that can shoot through rocks and shields. Oh, can I destroy rocks with this? Yes, I can. <laughs> There's rocks right here for me to destroy. Oh. I didn't realize I could go down here. Have I been down here? Oh, I have not. Is this a boss? Oh, I'm just zooming. Oh, shit. Maggie. <laughs> what? Oh, I have to hit the crystal. <laughs> I like, do they have the minecart in the fight? Oh shit. He got like a little rock shield. Oh. I, oops. <laughs> Heal up real quick, just in case. Oh, it's hiding. Cool. Yeah, the game's really well made. And it's, it's also really unique, too. Like, I haven't seen a Metroidvania in this style. 
So I definitely recommend this game. Okay, Bloody Hell lived up to the hype. I played through the game, it took about three hours, and I would have never guessed that this game was made by a bunch of students. It's a blend of two genres resulting in a unique concept, which they pulled off really well. All the elements of the game are solid, the artwork and the music are great, the combat is a load of fun, and there's tons of areas to explore. I didn't care too much for the story or the writing, but it took a back seat to the gameplay anyway. My favorite part was the blood vial system. It's such a clever idea and it was so much fun to strategize around fitting the blood vessels you wanted onto the grid. It would have been nice if the game was a bit longer, but I mean, it's free and it's already a game that in my opinion is worth paying for. Huge shout outs to the devs for making this. All right, if you're still watching, that's it for today. There's gonna to be links in the description to the Steam store pages for each game. I wanted to make this video because there's so many Metroidvania devs who deserve the exposure, but just don't get it. So go check these games out, and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe or let me know how you felt in the comments. Anyway, that's it for me. See y'all next time. Hope you have a great 2024, hopefully with Silksong included.